And welcome to the Off the Clock Show. You're joined once again with myself, Sean Gervais from Orbis X, and we've got Marty, Mr. Marshall Hill from the Finds and Polisher Podcast, as well as Hyper Clean Car Care Products, Los Productos. Yes, sir. Sorry, I was I finished a Spanish meeting like an hour ago. Anyway, it's been, it's been one of those days. But uh, it's been so, one what of those days, huh? One, oh, I'll get into that. Trust me. <laughs> but first, what, what are we sipping on today? Man, just to get all rum and care. Ah, nice. Me, I uh, got this one here, Four Roses Bourbon. Mm, I do like yeah. Four Roses. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's only because yesterday, uh, well, on the weekend, we went out for dinner. And then uh, my my buddy, he asked me what I wanted to drink. And he's like, no, wait, Negroni, because he knows me. When I go out, I get a Negroni. And so we had this thing. He always drinks old fashioned. So I said, okay, I tell mm-hmm. you what, next round, you get a Negroni and I'll get an old fashioned. And then, uh, anyway, his old fashioned, the guy nailed it. Round two, waitress was super busy, fucked mine up completely. Uh, and it's like, how do you even fuck that up? Anyway, long story short, they, they put three cherries in my thing. And I'm like, I mean, don't get me wrong, cherries are good, but uh, it was it was just way too sweet. And uh, for my life, more like a Manhattan. Yeah, it was uh, like, I don't know what the hell they were doing. Yeah. But anyway. And I like those. I like to switch back and forth. I sometimes ah. like the Manhattan, that real sweet cherry flavor. And then yeah. the burn of the whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me, uh, I, less sweet usually is the way to, you know, like uh, one time I was gifted a bottle of rum for my birthday. Never saw the bottle before. It's called like Bamboo or something. I don't know. It's got some crazy name. A weird looking bottle too. Anyway, first sip. And it was like uh, drinking brown sugar and water. It mm. was just, it was terrible. Like Kahlua. That's my deal with like yeah. Kahlua and those liqueurs. Yeah, like, I couldn't do it. Well, I, you know, I was trying to think earlier. I got some vodka in the in the fridge, so and well. and I was just getting ready to come out to the show, you know. And I was like, "What am I going to grab?" I was like, well, "I got some coffee." It's like, yeah. hmm, it's off the clock. Might as well try like coffee and vodka. I'm like, "Let's yeah. do this." And I'm like, Boom, no, no, "Let's no, go." No, no, I'm out. I'm out. Like, <laughs> You're like just no go good. with old trusty. You know, I got a little rum. Throw this <laughs> some coke. It's easy. Yeah, yeah. But that I, that was always my problem with like Kahluas and that stuff, which is you're supposed to use in coffee. And listen, yeah, uh, the White Russian is pretty amazing, right? It's a good drink one time, yeah. but well, yeah, but, but <laughs> come on, <laughs> like, I one can't time do it was that good. on the reg. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. It's, it's not my mm. thing. And uh, so, but the crazy thing is, so I, I made myself a old fashioned yesterday, and then I was like, you know, let me try drinking this just as is, and it's actually quite nice. Oh yeah, well, yeah. It's not bad. I don't. But you got to think. Like I usually drink just ice, or sometimes even nothing. Like uh, my tequila, for example. I usually don't put ice. So I don't know. This is not bad. It's a. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of like a, it's got kind of a smoky flavor to it. Mm-hmm. And that's why a lot of people like to drink bourbon, right? Which was that. Remember, I talked to you about that bourbon place I went to in Colorado Springs. Yeah. The real dark. Like yeah. that's why a lot of you go to those places. That's that's generally the way they'll do it. They'll just put. Their whiskey on a big chunk of uh, ice and yeah, away. That's, it. that's what I'm missing. Sophisticated with the cigar, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. See, I should have got all sophisticated. I have the the ice tray that does the the circles and all that stuff. The, oh the, hell the, yeah, you should have. Yeah. Here I am. I'm, I'm drinking just the one from the refrigerator like a peasant. <laughs> but uh, all good. So so yeah, today was a uh, today was a day of shit shows so far. Started at 7.30, not even, 7.27 this morning. One fire after the next. I swear to God, like Halloween was yesterday, but I feel like I'm still dressed up like a fireman or something. What? Hey, did you dress up? What'd you do? Oh, <laughs> my wife and I, actually, this is a funny story too. So my wife and I dressed up, uh, I'll share photos after, but we dressed up uh, as, I was Mr. Incredible. Mm-hmm. And she was Elastigirl from the, the show with the Incredibles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then uh, daughters, they dressed up totally different. One of them, Red Riding Hood, and the other one was, I think, I think it's a Disney character. I don't know. But, like, from the new, like, Disney movies that are coming out, not not something we would know from our childhood, like, the new shit with, like, vampires and all kinds of stuff. Um, I think it was Asha or something. I don't know. Some some character. A crown, purpley hair. I don't know. Shit. I was grew. Oh, nice. Oh, shit. That's Black perfect. pants. Throw on a little coat, get a scarf. Let's go. Ready Did you have go. any like minions with you or no? Yeah, so the wife went as a minion and then stepson okay. went as a uh, cow. He went as a uh, uh, a banana. Oh, yeah, go. Minions love bananas, you know? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now the big question is, did your wife the whole night then talk like a minion? Hell no. <laughs> I would have made it. <laughs> that would have been talk. funny. I never even thought of it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, maybe, really funny. Yeah, or however they sound like. <laughs> Honestly, you know what? If she ever watched, I'm sure she's probably seen it. We could have just spoke Portuguese and everybody would have thought she was talking minionist. You know, it's true. I was about to say, I swear, sometimes when they're speaking, I'll hear like, I'm like, are they speaking Spanish right now? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I think they do that on purpose in different languages. Ah, okay. Because like, there's some things they've said and I'm like, oh, Mm -hmm. they go, wait a second. (laughs) It's just enough to make you go, "Hmm?" like, it's really well done. When you think about it, you go, wow, that's, that's really impressive. They wrote that. So that I would go, hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think I know what they're saying. And everybody God, always says that. Oh, I can understand it. No, you can't. No, you can't. Yeah, because like, but I thought it too. I'm like, yeah. I think I understand. Like I, I know what he's talking about. Uh-huh. No, it's not. He's talking yeah, about yeah. like farts yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they wrote it in such a brilliant way that it makes you yeah. Yeah. that's true. See, they just capture your attention, you know. But uh, but yeah, so today was uh just putting out forest fires like from start to finish and the good thing is though is that uh you know as a seasoned entrepreneur you get really good at handling things like that and you just don't freak out and you just handle them one after the next uh but how long does that take um i mean seasoned right you said seasoned entrepreneur at some point in time in people's journeys like they actually have to wake up and enjoy those days like yeah you actually understand that that is just a part of your day and you enjoy it. hundred percent. Yeah. When did that happen for you? Do you remember? Yeah, I do actually. Uh, so I had a company, uh, it was called find us fast and it was kind of like an online directory, yellow pages type thing. Uh, we actually got an offer from yellow pages for that. Uh, it was a several million dollar bio too. But, uh, anyway, my business partner at the time, f- f- he fudged the whole thing. Let's just, anyway, so that didn't work out. Uh, they wanted to work with me, but because it was tied to him, they said, uh, if it wasn't him and it was just you in the picture, done deal. But they said because of this guy. Uh, anyway, so that was a, a humbling experience in some ways. Uh, but then going to work with him for the next little while, he had lost his motivation and I had to really pick up the pieces. Now, he was prior to that a seasoned entrepreneur, but he was just uh, he was an older guy. At the time, I was 25 and he was 52, 53. And he had had many businesses and um he had just kind of given up on his passion of things. So I had to fill in the blanks a lot. And I started having to learn in overdrive, learn by doing mostly, but just basically learn in overdrive. And just before I left that company, uh, I basically resigned all my shares. And I just said, I just don't want anything to do with you. I'm going to start over. And that's when I started over completely. And then we went into the recession and that was 2008 where things like started just not doing so well. So it was two years after that uh, I was, now starting over and like, okay, what do I do now? And I started having problems that I hadn't experienced in a while because when you're running a company and you have staff and you're used to a certain, you know, lifestyle culture, you wake up is what you do for your business. And then now you've got to start over or reset. And now you're dealing with problems. That's like, Oh shit. Like had all that done before, like, you know, finding an accountant and like all these things, uh, you have to deal with it and you got to deal with it quickly. You know, like we had a newborn stuff like that. So anyway, uh, it was about six months in, uh, we, we did a rush wedding at the time. Father-in-law was six. So we wanted to make sure he could walk my wife down the aisle. And, uh, it was around, you know, three months after that, cause I was dealing with a lot of pressures of planning the wedding and the pressures of starting a new business and all kinds of stuff. Uh, it was, I woke up one day and I had a day like today where there was just a ton of shit thrown at me from all different directions. And not once did I get upset. I didn't get frustrated. I didn't panic. I just handled things. And the next day was when I woke up. And that's when I was like, holy shit, I handled yesterday like a boss. And from that point on, I said, you know what? Every day has to be like this day. And it, that was around the time that uh, I realized there's, there's nothing that can happen that can't be dealt with or fixed in some capacity. Uh, but I feel like a lot of people, they kind of things weigh on them and it just keeps them down and they, they can't find a solution because they're so focused on, Oh, I've got all these problems. And so I'll never forget. And this is how I do remember exactly when it's because I had left working with that other guy and he was basically toxic for anything that I wanted to do in my life, not just business wise, but everything. But he told me something, and this is where I realized I had grown a lot as an entrepreneur and that someone that I basically just despised, but I was still able to pick out the good that they had given me throughout my life. And he told me something and what it was, it stands true to this day. 
He says, worrying about a problem that hasn't even happened yet. He said, you're worried about the what if, the what if, the what if, and you're too scared to do something. He said, that's basically paying interest on a loan that you haven't even taken out of the bank yet. He said, so there's no point in worrying about the what if or whatever. You just got to deal with it. So sometimes when people are looking at a problem, they're like, oh, well, I, I got to approach it this way or that way, because what if I do this and that? Next thing you know, you're hesitating, installing, and not actually dealing with it. And that's where I've learned that speed is the number one uh, successor for any business uh, success factor. Absolutely. Being first to market, being first to deal with the problem, first to deal with customers, whatever the case may be. And so that piece of advice he gave me, I, I hung on to it and I don't worry about shit. I'm just like, okay, this happened. How do I deal with it? So you're able to just kind of move through things and, and get them done. And uh, yeah, so, so today was a shit show in a lot of ways. Seven different companies that we're managing and literally every company had at least one, like, I wouldn't say major problem, but they had like one major issue of sorts that had to be dealt with at least one. And uh, it, it's funny, like one of them, we have a printing company, we're printing a coffee mugs for a client and uh, it's government contract. And so getting those contracts, it's a difficult process to get them. When you do get your foot in the door, you hang on to it. And we delivered the mugs and the courier dropped the package and a bunch of the mugs chipped and broke. And they need it for the afternoon. So they messaged, I was like, oh shit, don't worry, we'll get it taken care of. Reprinted them, sent it over. Problem solved, right? Nope. Courier busts up that one too. So I, I call them and I'm like, guys, listen, you guys are usually great. I wrote fragile. I, like, what, what else can we do? So anyway, long story short, reprinted again. Courier company covered the costs. Uh, so obviously not with our profits, but I told them, listen, this is what those mugs cost us. So they credited the deliveries. They're, they're reimbursing us for the cost of them. Reprinted them. This time, I said, you know what? One of my guys, throw them in your fucking car and drive it down there by itself. So it got there. Everything's fine. We were 25 minutes late. They're still happy. They distributed the mugs. Everything worked out. Uh, but it was just like compound problems that are unavoidable. How could we... We put that in someone else's hands. They're usually great. They drop, drop the ball per se. And, uh, but you just, you deal with it. And uh, by reacting quickly and being available to deal with it, that's uh, the key it, take. It's actually might be a thing that holds a lot of detailers back from being quote unquote much. I don't want to say this is where, you know, sometimes you might hurt somebody's feelings, right? I, I'm not trying to do that, but Maybe what's not getting you to the next level, let's just use that word, right? Because you don't want to use the word as bigger or better. Or, you know, that's that's purely, you know, yeah, whatever subjective okay. to, yeah. right? So maybe however they want to and view next level in their business could be just that thing because it might actually be innate in, of, of us as detailers to not really want to have problems, right? We yeah. actually, we actually don't as detailers, right? We, we want yeah. everything to go smooth. We want this car to have, you know, it comes in dirty and I want to just wipe it. I want to just put some clim chemical on. I want to just clean it. Like I want my process so smooth. I want everything easy. I want everything easy. I want it easy. And I want easy. And I want the customer to leave me a five-star review when he's done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And so maybe part of what's keeping some people out of the next level of they view of their level is the desire to actually have problems. Yeah. You, you don't that. know how to actually step into something greater unless you take a risk. Right. And many times when you're stepping, you don't always step in the exact spot that you should. Sometimes right. you have to redirect, right? Sometimes you have to change. You'd only know if you step. Absolutely. You only know how to fix something. If you fail, you only know that you want to fix it. If you have that desire to go, all right, every day, I know I've got a fire. I know that this, I'm an entrepreneur. This is what I do. I fix problems and yeah. I get to the next level. 100%. It's just like a video game, right? Not, not games today, but you remember yeah. what, like, <laughs> listen, for me, let's go back yeah. to Contra, right? Yeah, Fucking yeah. Contra. You got to be able to shoot. And then you got to get this alien. You got to get this. One. All right. You got to do this to get to the next level, right? Like games were much easier back then with that situation. Sometimes they still are now, but you could still take that analogy and look at it to whatever level, the next level that you want to achieve. 
And if you don't want to go fight the problems and have the battles, you might not ever really get there. It's true. Yeah, because to get to those next levels, uh, you're going to – every level, it's not that things are going to be harder, but they're going to be compounded. You're going to deal with more problems and the – more levels i'm trying to avoid using terms like <laughs> the more growth and stuff too the more levels you get to and level up on things uh it, the problems can can become larger like you know at our shop for example as we expanded services uh that came with new problems uh, because they were new things that we were doing but in order to get to our goal which was we wanted to start you know selling more windshield replacements more ceramic coatings more ppf jobs to do those new services and step out of just detailing, we had to assume some liability and risk that we're probably going to mess some things up, or maybe some people won't be 100% happy with it because it's new to us. But in order to start making a profit off of those services, we had to take the first step. And there's definitely been times we stumbled. And if you don't believe it, talk to my, my partner. Oh, yeah, no Paul. doubt. Talk to my partner, Paul, about the time that Sean was learning PPF and I tried to do do a super duty. <laughs> He'll have a story for you. I was trying to think here for a second and then I couldn't remember. I'm going to have to look up. I completely forgot. Did you? Oh, I was okay. There we go. I, I thought I had one. Do you have a post? Do you have a post? Uh, so, you... <laughs> I, did, I do. I did. So I, I found yeah. this. If you're paying $600 for a paint correction and ceramic coating, you're not getting a true ceramic coating. That was a post from a detailer. He oh, felt sorry. that he needed to put, not in a group, yeah. on his personal Facebook page. Personal page. Yeah. Is this like well, most page? detailers do that, right? Let's be, when yeah. you're on Facebook, most of them have, they, they express their business views in posts. Um, on, you the know, okay. on their own personal post, which is fine. You know, okay, no worries. Yeah. But he wants to tell other detailers, no, 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 I take that back. You're, he's telling customers, prospective customers, that if they're paying $600 for paint correction and a ceramic coating, you're not getting a true coating. Well, how does he know this? That's, there's the oh, best, yeah. that's the much better question to ask, yeah. right? Like, how do you, stop, says, why do you put it? It's, I get it why he wants to put it. He, he wants to beat his chest right now because he's still trying to charge more than everybody else. Yeah. He doesn't understand the market of when to have higher prices and when to have, it's, that's basic business of supply and demand, motherfucker. Like, come yeah. on, dude. I That's get it. Crazy. You want to beat your chest and tell a bunch of people that <laughs> your views, I get it, but you look yeah. like a ridiculous idiot oh, making man. a post like this. It doesn't attract higher clientele that would pay the thousand dollars. You're yeah. not going to attract a guy that's 1500 bucks and has no problem. Won't blink an eye. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You know what else I would argue too? If someone posted that and I was a customer and didn't know anything. There you go. That's what I was trying to say. Like, okay. That's, that's what I was like. You, you're not going to attract those people by making this post. Yeah, this no. is ridiculous. <laughs> like, why would you do this? Beat your chest over some personal thing that you have that yeah. some other deep, like, some other detailer basically beat his price. Yeah. So he lost a job. And he felt that he should go voice because social media allows it. Zuckerberg does a great job that makes this guy think that this is the thing that he should go do. Mm -hmm. It's and true. then you go, what? Yeah, but if I'm the customer that really does want the quality, doesn't mind price, sliced, this guy's gone, right? Yeah. Like you, you, he might have come on and you know worked with a company like yours and gotten a, a great rate, you know, got put out here and ran this ad. And this customer goes and looks at his business page and sees that, but then clicks over to his personal page and then sees this post. Like he yeah. did all this other stuff, but let's go. Come on, the, the guy that makes this post didn't work with a company like yours, didn't set up their business profile, didn't do everything the way it should be done. But he still has the audacity to go tell everybody that if they're paying less without determining level of correction 
without determining years of ceramic coating. Yeah, like, 100%. Come on. Yeah. That's a ridiculous statement all around. Yeah, and the brand as well. Because, listen, yeah. I've tested a lot of products. And there have been some products from some brands that I've tested, ones that were sent to me, things like that, that cost more, in a lot of cases, double what we're paying now, but performed poorly. That, and when I say perform poorly, I'm referring to two aspects. For me, a performance of a ceramic coating is ultimately what it's going to do for the vehicle and the customer, but also what it's going to do for my business as well. If it's something that is very overly complicated, unnecessarily complicated to install, if it's something that's going to take a long time, um, it, those are things that are, are going to affect the performance of my business to function as well. And I would argue that. <laughs> Those aren't true ceramic coatings, if you ask me, because there's, there's better technology out there. But um, that being said, that's their version of their ceramic coating, and that's fine. Uh, the point I'm getting to, I guess, is that what this post could have been educational. It could have said, uh, you know, here's the brand we use, and here's how long we typically spend on a vehicle. And, you know, so it's important to compare apples to apples if you're looking for this, something like that. that they, I don't know. I just feel like it could have been done in a a way that would have drawn them some more attention in a positive light. But once uh, again, I don't think he had that. In it. I think he was upset, right? He lost. Well, I think he was it. venting for sure. He's venting. He, right? and he, you know why he was venting? Somebody else figured it out. Yeah, that was what I said. Like he lost a deal. Somebody yeah. got a better price. So. 100%. Because listen, we offer, absolutely do we offer a ceramic coating and a protection, you know, sealant option as well, yeah. both well under that price point. Yeah. We also do include some paint correction with that. Uh, to what level? It depends. You know, like everything case by case basis. A lot of people are going to. And there you go. This. There's a lot of shit where we don't even touch the polish. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so what? Doesn't want it. What does correction mean? Right. Like, what does it mean? That's why I've been such a fucking pushing back on the industry on this over since 2017. Like, yeah. what does paint correction mean? You can't say, oh, I do paint correction to ceramic coating. Anybody that pays over six under 600 bucks is, is not getting a ceramic. Coat. Like, that's not. No, <laughs> no. We did trainings. We yes. did plenty of trainings. I did one yeah. with Jason Rose up at Rupes. Right at there, we talked heavily about how you can go through and do a w easy one step. We're going to release a one step. So many people have one step. Like you go one step a car, and to that customer, it's a it's fully corrected. I mean, it's a seventy to seventy five percent corrected with yeah. the right, you know, our HyperClean one pad and a really good, you know, polish. You can many times get sixty percent to the, so to the average person seeing a car in daylight. Seeing a car, geez, and especially if you're in a place like Seattle that has clouds nonstop, right? Or, you know, Canada yeah. where the whole place is just gloomy, right? Then then all the cars look great. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you let me get Absolutely. away with that one. You let me get away with that one. My point is like, it, it's, not, it's not always doing it for the gram, right? It's not always show car. It's not. Yeah. Like, daily driver, I've got a Grand Wagoneer here that we're doing correction and coating. Yeah. I mean, but it's and, not, it's a brand new, it's brand new. What is correction on that one? It means she told me that she has a couple marks that she already knows about because she, she knows what she did. And okay. Yeah. Then absolutely. the rest of it's what a real light polish. Like, yeah. wait, I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Especially because when you think the prep work for ceramic coating, mostly is just making sure that everything's decon properly so that mm -hmm. you're, you know, coating the car, but in terms of paint correction, that's that's in my opinion 100% cosmetic um, for the customer's needs, whatever they would like to see in their yeah. car. If the guy doesn't give a shit about a mirror finish and he's not going to sit outside and put a bunch of shit against the wall and then take a picture of his side of his car and try and trick people, like uh, you know what I mean? This lady's got three kids. Crazy. She's gotten her car coated with us multiple times. Yeah, it's because she loves the ease of maintenance. Yeah. It, she just bought a hundred thousand dollar Grand cool. Wagoneer. Well, why should I force her to do something that she doesn't need? 
Yeah. That's bad yeah. business. Yeah. Bad 100%. business. So don't tell me that because you want to force your customers into something and don't tell me because you probably paid to your point, Sean, this guy probably paid double what a hyper clean tray could be hyper clean dose, something easy like that. Yeah. Maybe even more than double so that that makes him have to get his money back and it probably takes him a lot longer. So that's even more time. And he's got to add money into his account because I get it. You're a business, but maybe you didn't do good business and you paid too much for your ceramic coating and it takes too long to install. Then I could understand why you're saying you have to charge a thousand dollars over 600. I understand there, but you don't know, tell somebody who might've been smarter than you. Maybe they bought hyper clean ceramic coating because that company knew that there would be a time that somebody needs to have a much simpler install at a much better rate because the market was going to force detailers to be able to sell a correction and a coating at a very valuable and reasonable rate to customers so that that detailer's business can grow. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I started it in 2017 and here we are, and there's yeah. somebody still complaining against the market and that's bad yeah. business. While then everybody that's installing hyper clean ceramics are going, dude, this is fucking awesome. I'm killing yeah. it. I'm killing Absolutely. It. And you know what it is? It's a natural market cycle. So what usually happens is a product or something comes out that is only available through professionals, for example, then over time, the DIY, you know, do it yourself for market starts to come into play as well. And so things naturally harmonize to a place where there's, yeah, there's products available, I could do it myself, and it's super cheap, might not be as good a result. The alternative is I go somewhere else and get it done. But now I'm comparing the price for what I can do it myself, and what I can get a professional. And if that gap is too large, it's going to over time come closer and closer together to the point where it's like, well, I can get it done for $600. So I, I'm not going to spend the time or energy to do it myself. But if the gap is $4,000 versus doing it myself for, you know, 200, let's say that's, so it's just a natural occurrence. Things are going to, the gap is going well, to It's not even it. just the DIYers, man. Like he probably lost the, he probably lost the customer to another, another detailer. detailer. 100%. Who was, had a more efficient business, who understood the market, who was able to provide a ceramic coating and correction Absolutely. to the customer, met the customer's needs, all the things you and I talk okay, about, right? Like right. the better business won in this battle and yeah. he's online bitching about it, but yeah. he should realize that somebody had a better business than he did. Somebody would be able to get the customer well, what they need. Let's go through a quick exercise if you want. Let's, let's just assume a job comes in Okay, let's take the $600 amount, all right? So with $600, could someone buy a real ceramic coating from HyperClean? Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot less, right? Lot less. Okay, so let's factor that in. Let's say, let's say someone goes for dose, okay? Dose, I know it's a popular seller. Let's yep. say someone goes for dose. What are we looking at? We have at about a $20 to $25 install. Okay, so now let's just assume hundred dollars just for the sake of being exaggerated here. Okay. You're left with $500, right? That's way over. Just call it 50 then, man. I mean, <laughs> max amount that you'd All ever right. spend yeah. installing 50 bucks. There you go. All right. So, so we're down to 550, right? Now let's say you get a guy or maybe you're doing it yourself and you spend what two hours on pain correction, three hours, maybe let's just say, okay. So now if we take, Let's say you spend two hours. Yeah, because we're going to let's go. We're one step. We're getting 70% yeah. of it out. This is not a show car. There we go. So at 600 bucks after your costs, you're pretty two much. Two hours in the, out. let's go one hour prep, hour. Yeah. one hour prep, two hours on correction, one hour on install, one hour for bullshit. And you're five hours in. All right. So let's say that takes five hours. Cause I know there will be some people out there who spend five hours on that. My shop will bang that out in two and a half. You know what I mean? But we got a crew tackling that. Um, but let's just say the five hours. Okay. So you're sitting at the hundred dollar an hour mark. Okay. And now assuming that you can upsell that customer, something else, get referrals from them. You can, whatever your cost of acquisition for the next customer, plus the extra from upselling this guy. That's a decent day's work for a lot of detailers out there. Okay. Plus, hopefully you took some photos. 
Plus, hopefully yeah. you did some videos. Plus, yeah. hopefully you're going to grab some content so that you can do for your marketing. So yeah. let's just go ahead and say six hours in because you need an extra hour to get some videos. You do all that stuff. Sure. Six so hours. Even six hours. You're still good. And what you need to do now is get more efficient at that or hire more people. So they're doing that while you're handling the other side of the business. Right. So or, or what would a six hour day be for a lot of guys that you can make 600 bucks in a day times five? What's geez, that? Three I, grand? I tell you, for, for a lot of what people. Is that? 600 bucks times five. I think that's three grand. Three grand. Sean, what's that in a year? Jeez. That's a really nice life. Now we're talking. That's what yeah. that is. That's a Absolutely. really fucking nice and, life. And really, to, how many cars are you dealing with in a year? Thirty yeah. hours in a week, yeah, and make over a hundred thousand dollars in a year. And this yeah. asshole is telling people don't do it. Like, what? <laughs> it's what? crazy. No, not only don't do it, he's saying that it's not real. Like it's yeah. a human. We just broke it down. This it's is fucking a fucking dream. Real. Fuck it, I'm out of here, Sean. Hold on, man. I gotta go. I, I gotta go start this six hundred dollar a day deal, man. Seriously, I'm out of here. you know it's that it's that simple though. It's uh, but people overcomplicate things, and so you got to think like when people say, "Oh, it can't be done," this and that. Like at our shop, we're doing twenty five to thirty cars a day, and we're doing all this same kind of shit. So it's it's you can get really efficient at things, and you can bang out volume when you hire people. I can't do twenty five to thirty cars a day, but I can hire a lot of people to do that. So once you get your process down, you could hire people. And then if you pay them well, look how much profit we just talked about. Oh, Chris can play with. I know I brought, up, pay them I brought well. up a very touchy subject. Because man, know. I'm making over a hundred thousand bucks a year. Not a, I'm not about to pay somebody sixty thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. But if that sixty thousand dollars that you spent meant that you could do instead of six hundred bucks a day, it meant that you could do twelve hundred bucks a day. Think about man, if you could do 1500 bucks a day, yeah, because you started adding in Hyperclean Uno and just getting some in and out jobs, 1500 bucks a day. God damn, Sean, let's go back and do that. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, see, but you no, basically like just really pay somebody it. to have a really nice life at 60,000 bucks a year, and you're sitting at that point still over a hundred thousand bucks a year, yeah, and that's it, definitely well over a hundred thousand. Yeah. Not absolutely. too many detailers I know are sitting pretty for six to eight hours a day and over a hundred thousand dollars. There's there's few and far between. True. It's true. And let's let's factor in too that as you're doing this, you're building your client list as well. So as you hire people, you take on more jobs even faster, your client list grows. So your business literally becomes a very secure nest egg for you because now you've got such a massive you know client list plus exposure. So it's, it's a pretty sure thing if, if you put the time in. But if you're in comparison, let's say you're doing the $4,000 job, doing $4,000 coatings, and you're only seeing half that number of cars. Well, it doesn't take much to knock you completely out of your business. And now you... Uh, oh, Sean, are you hearing how many shops have been closing? Oh, I mean, they're, they're dropping like flies, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Dropping like flies because they didn't understand. They didn't understand the market's changing. The market's changing. Yep. You they can get what you get when the market's boom. hot, but. Yeah, they all came in when it was like a boom. And then now they're just folding up, folding up, folding up. Like just around us, uh, we purchased a list of three different guys that just closed up. Uh, excuse me. And uh, I anticipate a few more. Uh, I, I would love to make an offer on a couple others too. So, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, it's, it's just one of those things that, um, you know, you really have to understand the long-term play and the long-term play is omnipresence, being everywhere and having a lot of clients in your roster that you can upsell to, you can cross sell to all that kind of stuff, but it comes with doing volume. And so charging the highest ticket price as possible, uh, you're, you're hindering your growth more than you think you're actually sustaining a wealthy income. It's, yep. it's really quite the opposite. And, uh, and it's definitely 100% possible to do coding plus paint correction for $600. And here's how I know it's possible. We buy our products in US dollars and our dollar is getting destroyed right now compared to yours. Uh, like the US dollar is worth a lot more. So my point is our product cost to get stuff in Canada is more than you know our neighbors to the South, right? But yet we can still 
do everything that we just talked about within 600 Canadian dollars, which is basically pesos at this point. So I mean, like if we can do it 100%, and we're using real coatings as well. That's uh, the other thing I'll point out there, unless Marty's changed the formula without telling me. <laughs> you selling us water? <laughs> 100% real, brother. Yeah, yeah, there we go. See, so it's, it's doable. And if anyone's curious, DM me, send me an email. You know, and I'll, uh, trust me, I'll, I'll break down our whole process. I can be fully transparent, like uh, no concerns at all, because the way we run the business, nobody can compete, which funny enough, actually, uh, had a competitor uh, in the software space sign up for a trial of 4x6. I think they're running low on ideas. <laughs> I was dying of laughter this morning anyway server flagged it because there's some words that get flagged some you know ip addresses stuff like that and uh sent it to me and i was like oh shit isn't that funny anyway so you can't reproduce the magic sauce i'm sorry because i am the magic sauce but anyways good luck to you <laughs> but uh so i did have a tip today you got a tip for us i mean we just gave them like 10 10 tips three tips yeah i, I thought that was the tip jeez <laughs> Okay, well, I got a quick tip. Okay, quick tip. Quick tip. Quick tip. Yeah. Quick tip. Just I got little... a quick tip too. So you do a quick tip. All right. <laughs> Two quick tips. Brace yourselves. So my quick tip is pump. Speed. Pump. Uh... <laughs> oh, done? Are we done yet? We're done yet? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that movie we were watching. She was like, uh, uh, I just came. <laughs> she was just... <laughs> oh, I can't remember. I'll think of the name and I'll send it. But, uh, but yeah, so my mine is about speed and efficiency, which I'm a huge proponent of. We talked about this a little bit during this episode as well. Uh, so the average wait time on hold when you call companies, do you know what it is, Marty? Across North America. Uh, what type of companies? Uh, oh, good question. Uh, so this is, yeah. So, okay, to answer two parts to that. One, customer service department, okay? Usually for existing customers, okay? And in most industries, except for farming and telecommunications, okay? So what they did is they looked at service-based businesses, uh, home cleaners, plumbers, so on and so forth, okay? Detailers fell in there as well. Average hold time or wait time to get a hold of somebody. Existing customer, we win this year, 16 minutes. Meaning, oh. Yeah. So 16 minutes, they were waiting to get a hold of somebody. Okay. Now that might not sound crazy. But no, that it, since I was actually yeah. going to go a lot more. I, I, yeah. So that's interesting because average, then that means some people were immediate. I exactly. think there's a ton of people that are a day late, two mm -hmm. days late, 100%. You know, 16 totally. hours, 12 hours, eight hours. So I'm really surprised 16 minutes, Absolutely. honestly. That's so that's the results for the phone. Okay. The other one, was messaging the average time 32 hours 32 hours being the average okay so now here's the difference okay someone calling the ones that are answering the phone and getting back to people is this people up in canada we're talking about let's clarify this hold on a second <laughs> yeah exactly so, so put it this way We've all seen those posts, right? Where someone says like, oh, I hate this, where I message a customer and then they just disappear. They ghost me, right? Well, your customers and potential customers are also getting ghosted. And there's a lot of guys I, I see complain in groups like, oh, I, I hate when they call or I hate when they message. Like, you know, I'm going to have your car ready soon or whatever, whatever the case may be. Or I hate answering all these questions, stuff like that. They complain about these things. But you have to see it, every one of those points of contact as an opportunity. The faster you can get back to somebody. So like in the group, I'm sure you've seen people ask a question. doesn't matter what time of day. I don't sleep very much. I usually, boom, get back to, you know, a response within usually like three minutes, something like that. Something ridiculous. And I pride myself in that, especially with emails and so on and so forth. Because that point of contact, even if it's just to say, working on it, I'll get back to you soon. Something like that. Someone getting a response back is hugely important. And it's something with Auto World that I've made sure, like, all oh my guys know. Someone calls, someone does a live chat, whatever. You got to answer it right away. And you got to just let them know if you can't deal with it right then and there. You know, uh, give me a minute. I'll collect some information. Or just finishing up with someone. 
I'll be right back, stuff like that. Uh, because speed is one of the things that's really going to help take your business to that next level. And so my tip is everything that you're doing, either don't do it or do it with speed. And what I mean by that is some people, they set up a live chat and then they never answer it or they can't answer it or something like that. If you aren't able to answer until the next day, just remove it from your website. Don't even have it up there because someone's going to be looking for that instant thing. And now they filled it out. They haven't heard back from you. They're probably assuming, oh, this business is out of business. And they're going to start looking for other places. By the time you do get back to them, they're kind of just like, ah, I didn't feel like a priority. You've already set the tone. So try and get on those things right away. And if you can't, you can hire somebody. You can go to Fiverr and you can hire someone to be your virtual assistant. You, there's companies that do you know, live chat stuff, answer the phones, all kinds of systems out there, or hire someone. Your girlfriend or boyfriend's not doing anything for your business. See if they can help out maybe, like who knows? But there's things you can do. Speed is my biggest tip. That's my uh, tip for the day. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, tip. Sean, do you, do you ever like, you ever like just a tip or go a little too far? Sometimes, quite often, weekly, usually weekly. <laughs> so my just a tip is to not be like Sean. It's not... <laughs> Don't go too far. Don't go too far. <laughs> Don't go too far. Just like, just do it. Yeah. Well, no, just do enough. And here's just what I mean, enough. right? I sent you a photo of a, a detailer that I ran up on and just ran up into him on a, to a stoplight, right? Like see him on the road and he did a full wrap of his vehicle. I immediately caught my eye that he was something. I, I saw the wrap, but I was, it was, you know, he, he must've really enjoyed camouflage, right? Like yeah. he's a guy that loves camo. So he decided I want to wrap my truck in camo and then put my logo and everything I do around the vehicle. But I just saw camo. Mm, yeah. What caught my eye was the big white tank that he had in the back of his truck. And I go, oh, right. First of all, me, I go, wow, that's a white tank. It's water. Okay. Uh, oh, there's a power washer. Oh, wait. Okay. And then I could start putting it together. Yeah. Wow. Okay. This guy's a detailer but his creativity just went too far. Yeah. He went over right. Like <laughs> he didn't understand. Like I just need a little here. Yeah. You want to put something on your vehicle, put something on your vehicle, but just do a little bit. Yeah. Just right here. Just a little. But keep it simple. You know? Yeah. Keep it clean. Mm -hmm. Keep it clean. If you want to wrap it to help you keep it clean, then fine. Just wrap it in a very simple design. I don't need to get, I, I got lost. If I'm a person and I just see you driving down the road, I see a camouflage vehicle or some yeah. other stuff. Like I'm, it's you, you spent what? $5,000 yeah. or more. You think more? Uh, so this uh, Well, for full color, full wrap, it's, it's a trucker van. You said truck. before you had a truck. Truck. Uh, no, here it would be around four or 5,000. Yeah. Okay. It's come it's come down in price. Sorry. Sorry, it's it's not a real wrap unless it's ten thousand. <laughs> Great job. But you get my yeah. point, right? This yeah. is a guy that's he's in a nice truck. He's got looks like he's got some nice equipment. He's got a nice logo. Yeah. He obviously invested in the business by getting the wrap and stuff. So yeah. where could he have spent that five thousand dollars much better? Yeah. He just well, took his creativity honestly. and what he wanted too yeah. far. Gee, he just yeah. went too far. And I find that's common with a lot of things too. And on the note, I see it in flyers a lot where like our shop, we offer a lot of different services. And I see that too, where guys are, they put out a flyer, detailing, ceramic coating, paint protection, but paint correction. They, but even they, there, they won't say paint correction. They'll say, Pain correction, one step, two step, three step. Like they just, they put so much in it. It'd be far more effective if you literally just said like ceramic coating, just left it there. And then a little blurb about that. That would be more effective than all of this stuff that I see on it because it just, it ends up being too much. And I think it's a, it's a problem that, so we have a printing shop and we call it the full color syndrome where the minute you tell someone, oh yeah, all our pricing is based on full color. 
So there's no difference whether you have one color, two color or whatever. So then people go crazy with their designs because they're like, oh, I could put anything in because it's the same price. And it's, you can, it's not going to cost you more in terms of what you're paying, but it's going to cost you in the sales you don't get because it's just way too much in there. And you got to look at what kind of things keep it simple, you know, and, uh, a big one I, I always go back to is things like um, shampoo bottles, for example. Shampoo bottles usually are pretty straightforward. A little thing that says shampoo will maybe show some berries or something, whatever the flavor is, and then that's it. And it's just the rest of the bottle, you know? And uh, so things like that, they work because from a distance, when you're walking through a grocery store aisle, you can, you know, see like, oh, that's that, that's that, that's that. But then look at kids stuff you know and they've got like flying unicorns all over the fucking place and it's like dunkaroos and this and that and it's the kids will recognize things they saw on you know commercials and stuff oh, <laughs> commercials <laughs> that's when we had commercials <laughs> but uh but anyways you gotta keep it simple i find I, I agree with that tip here i am see i'm going too far with the <laughs> but but basically yeah definitely keeping things simple was is... it good for you it was it was fantastic. <laughs> I'd be back for more. <laughs> but yeah, it, uh, it, you know, it, one of the guys down the road from here is a plumber, and his thing just had white van, uh, just has his logo, phone number, and then it says "We do plumbing." That's it. That's all. It, all it asks. If he's driving down the road, there's no question what he does. Now it's not just some generic font. He made the fonts look kind of nice. His logo looks nice, stuff like that. But everything's spaced out. But I can literally see his van from a mile away, you know, 10 miles away. And I can, I can read, oh, that's what he does. This other guy, he's going down the road, no clue. And even if he's parked, that'd be even worse because now it's stationary. I'm moving. It's just a blur, especially camouflage. Come on, man. <laughs> that doesn't help. Doesn't help at all. So, so yeah, that's, that's a good tip though. Cause a lot of people, they do go excessive on that, but uh, yeah. So this time, yeah, it's funny, you know, we always say like, okay, today's a quick episode and then <laughs> tip after tip after tip. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good one. But yeah, so speed and not doing too much. Those are two, uh, yeah. yeah. Go for That's speed, it. but don't do too much. <laughs> yeah, I like, I, I like it. See? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. That's a good slogan for this one. All right, awesome. I Thanks thought it was don't be like Sean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't be like Sean. Exactly. <laughs> don't and go too far, like Sean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if it's six hundred dollars, it's not a real code. That's yeah, the, yeah, six hundred. <laughs> that's the other thing. <laughs> Jeez, I'm really happy we did the breakdown because it really helps to put things in perspective. Because sometimes people read those posts and they say, "Oh, you know, six hundred dollars is not a real coding." They get in their own head because they've heard that from other, you know, industry mm -hmm. pros, quote unquote. Uh, but when you break it down and do the math, that's where you can really see, like, oh. So my costs are only this, you know, like I've seen people say like, oh, does anyone know where I can buy a cheaper APC? They're like, what are you spending now? And they're like 35 bucks. And it's like, man, you're wasting so much of your precious time. Like, Jesus, if it's working for you, just use it. Because what are you going to save? $2? Factor that out over what? A hundred cars? Like, come on. You're saving a fraction of a penny. It's ridiculous. Like, uh, there's, there's bigger things you're going to be spending money on. Trust me. Like the camouflage wrap for your truck. <laughs> Here's your sign. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks, Marty. Appreciate your time as always. I'll see you next week. And uh, we'll be back at it with more just a tip from the original just a tip creators. <laughs> that was another. <laughs> we'll see you next week, Marty. Thanks for everything. Huh? All right. Cheers. Cheers.